Good evening. Good evening. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, Crisia. Good evening. Good evening, Dalila, Elena. Hello, Liliana, Maria, Olga. Hello, Good evening. Lourdes. Hello. <laughs> hello, Lourdes. Good evening. Hello, Gabriela. Good hello, evening. Crisia. Hello, Claudia. Good evening. It's really nice to see you over here. Now we're gonna start in a couple of minutes. Let us give some, let us provide some minutes to everybody so that they can uh, gather into the class. Okay. It's eight o'clock. Oh, one minute after after eight. So, what did you learn uh, about English, people? What did you learn? Remember that you are in charge of uh, sharing a quote, a new phrase in English. Okay, something that you have uh, learned recently will be really nice. Yeah, me for for example, I I learned uh, the phrase my treat okay. when you go with something. It's so, my treat when you live with yeah. somebody. Yes, <laughs> it's on me. Then you say it's on me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good expression, right? That's really yeah. useful whenever you you have a date with somebody. Good. So it's on me. It's a treat. Okay. Yes. Pretty good. Anybody else? Something new in English? Something that you have just learned? I learned the indirect question. Indirect question. What did you learn, Maria? Uh, for example, can you tell me if she is French? Can you tell me if she is French? Excellent. Pretty good. Good, good, good. I really, really like that. New expression. Aha. Uh -huh. Anybody else? Cesar? Iliana? Dalila? What's new? Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Everybody, uh, I thought everything we set out to do is only achieve it with effort to obtain results. That's all. Okay, very good. Pretty good, pretty good. Anybody else? Anybody else? No one else, Maria, Gabriela? Any expressions? Good evening. Hello, Richard. hello, hello, Gabriela. Hello. Hello. Uh, Se puede call, call you 
tell me where the bus stop. Uh, could you ah uh, could you could you tell me where the bus stop is? Is uh huh. Uh, pretty good. That's a good one. That's about indirect question. Good. 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 Okay, so we're going to start it's because, you know, I will check list attendance as soon as possible. And later, we're going to start with the class itself. So, okay, say hello, right? Alejandra? Aristides? Carlos David? Present teacher. Cesar? Cesar Present Ivan? Teacher. Okay. Present. Claudia Margarita? Present teacher. Concepción de Lourdes? Present. Dalila? Present teacher. Elena Marisol? I'm here. Gabriela Noemi? Present teacher. Idalia Margarita? Present teacher. Ileana Janet? Hello, teacher. Hello, Ingrid Morena. Ingrid Morena. Juan Carlos. I hear teacher. Okay, Crisia Morena. I hear. Liliana Dolores. I hear. Okay, Present. Ma Maria Magdalena. Present teacher. Olga Lisset. Present teacher. Rina Margarita. Present teacher. Wendy Beatriz. Present teacher. Yeah, excellent. Pretty good. So the majority of the people, I will check the least attendance at the end. Well, we're going to start by talking a little about, about it. About the topic, okay? Now, listen, section one, it's over, right? Section two, it's over. Section three is the one that we are working with. And we are gonna work in the midterm exam. Remember, this week is a week in which we are gonna have the midterm exam, okay? Now, time for a change. That is where we are gonna be working tonight because we still have some uh, topics over here. Juan Carlos? Sorry, teacher. Uh, I working. If I can participate, I will. Okay, Juan Carlos. Okay, I I got it. I I got that you are in your job. Okay. Okay, very good. Now we are gonna talk a little bit about adjectives. And I told you, right? Tonight is the night in which you are going to create something. In, by using indirect questions, simple past tense. Um, what else? Evaluation with adjectives and nouns. And we also are going to study about comparison with adjectives and nouns. So remember, I will go a little bit, a little bit uh, briefly through these topics, and then you are going to create a conversation. Okay? Okay? Okay. Okay. So remember. We need to get a product. Tenemos que sacar un producto esta noche de lo que hemos venido estudiando. ¿Ok? Veamos. Vamos a... Tomen apuntes, presten atención. We're going to start now. Here we go. The topics about adjectives. Let me know if you are able to listen to right now. We, I, let's see. Hey, I don't know what's going on with it. Give me a second, please. Give me a second because... Okay, here we go. Can you listen? No, no. teacher. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> no, teacher. 
Sorry, it was my fault once again. No, but yeah. at the end of this class, Listen. you will be able to give your opinion about houses and apartments. Additionally, you will be able to evaluate your own house and apartment. For example, you'll be able to make the following statements. Apartments are too small for pets, but houses are too expensive. Houses cost too much money. Before I talk about the grammar involved in this particular class, what I would like to do now is I would like to play an audio program which illustrates how this topic is used. We will listen to a few people talk about their opinions on houses and apartments. Your task is to listen carefully and answer a couple of questions that I'll have for you at the end of the audio program. Apartments are too small for pets. Apartments aren't big enough for families. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments have just as many expenses as houses. Apartments don't have as many rooms as houses. Houses aren't as safe as apartments. Houses aren't as convenient as apartments. Houses cost too much money. Houses don't have enough closet space. Houses don't have as much privacy as apartments. Let me present some structure now. The first thing that I would like to do is to show you how to make evaluations using adjectives. And particularly, we're going to learn how to use the words enough and to. After that, we're going to make evaluations, but this time we're going to use nouns. And at the same time, we're also going to use the words enough and also to. First of all, what are adjectives? Well, adjectives are those words that describe nouns. So they describe people, places, or things. Since we're talking about evaluating houses and apartments, what we want to do is we want to think about some of those adjectives that we might use to evaluate a house or an apartment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a lot of those words here. And then what I would like for you to do is to uh, memorize this and uh, maybe study them if you're not familiar with them. So for example, we have the adjectives comfortable, convenient, dangerous, dark, bright, expensive, huge, small, inconvenient, modern, noisy, private, quiet, safe, small, spacious. And I'm pretty sure you can think of many more. So let me present some structure at this time on how to make sense of this evaluation that you see there towards the left. Apartments aren't big enough for families. So in order for us to make that particular evaluation, we can think of the following structure. So let me go ahead and write that now. Following this structure, we can see that we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we have apartments. This is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be in its negative form. Okay. And then, and then this is going to be followed by the adjective. So in this case, the adjective is big. Then this is going to be followed by enough. And then um, we're going to have some sort of complement here. So in this case, it happens to be families, right? So if we look at the pattern, we have a subject. I'm going to go ahead and follow the colors so that we can see what's happening there. That's in black. There we go. So we can see that the subject is apartments. Then this is followed by the verb to be. In this case, it happens to be the verb to be in its negative form. After that, we're going to have some sort of adjective. And then it's going to follow the word enough. And then we're going to include um, some sort of complement, if you will. So if we think about other evaluations that we can say about apartments, either apartments or homes, then we can say the following. I'm going to go ahead and copy this because the next evaluation is going to be quite similar. So we can say the following. Apartments aren't, and so I'm going to change the adjective here. So I'm going to say aren't spacious enough for families. Okay. And let's do one more. Uh, we can also say that apartments aren't 
and I'm going to change the adjective now. I'm going to say apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. The next thing that I would like to do is to make sense of that second evaluation that you see there at the bottom. Now using the word to. And so what I want you to notice is the following. That we're just going to have different ways of evaluating things. And so there isn't just one way to do it. There are many different ways. So in this case, we're going to use this expression. And I want you to notice what's going to change. So I want you to think about what is the opposite of big. Well, the opposite of big, we can we can think of that as being small, right? So in this case, I want you to notice what, what's going to change. So in this case, I'm going to say apartments are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to include two small. So the only thing that changes is that I'm no longer using the bird to be in its negative form, but now I'm using it in its positive form. And then I'm including two plus the adjective small. And I'm saying for families. So what I want you to notice is that these two sentences, these two evaluations are the same thing. The only thing is that I'm expressing them in different ways. The next thing that I would like to do now is to show you how to make evaluations. But now we're going to talk about making evaluations using nouns. And a couple of things will change. And so let me present the formula at this time. And I'm going to show you what kind of things will change. Well, first of all, um, similar to making evaluations with adjectives, we're going to have a subject. So in this case, we're going to say apartments. Okay. That's going to follow a verb. In this case, it's no longer the verb to be. So that's the first thing that changes. We're no longer using the verb to be. So in this case, we're using any other kind of verb. In this case, it happens to be that that's on a negative. So we, we're going to say don't have. That's uh, The verb is on its negative form. And then this follows enough. So opposite from adjectives where we would include the adjective first, when we make evaluations using nouns, we no longer use the adjective first. We're going to include enough, and then we're going to include the noun. So let me give an example here. Don't have enough. And then uh, whatever um, noun that we want to include. So in this case, don't have enough parking spaces. OK? Uh, so the noun is parking spaces. And then you can think of a complement, if you will. So you can include something else there. So for example, uh, what could that be? Don't have enough parking spaces for people, right? That could be the complement. But in this case, the noun is parking spaces. And quickly, I want to talk about nouns. So what are nouns? What are some of the nouns that we can think about when we are um, you know, thinking about making evaluations of apartments and houses. Well, uh, we can think of things like parking spaces, as you can see there. We can think of things like closet space, right? We can think of things like privacy. And of course, we can think of things like money, if you will, right? So these kind of things are nouns that we can think of. So we can say the following. Apartments don't have enough parking spaces. Apartments don't have enough closet space. Apartments don't have enough privacy. And the last example that I would like to make is how to use to. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this I'm going to take that example there. Houses, this follows the verse, so that continues to be the same. We are no longer going to include the word enough. So in this case, we're going to use too much money, right? Houses cost too much money. So if we can think of this, I'm going to follow the pattern there, houses cost. That follows the verb. And then in this case, I want you to notice what happened. So we include too much money. We're almost done the with it. The last thing that I would like for you to do now is to evaluate your house or apartment. It depends on where you live, right? And I want you to evaluate your house or apartment using adjectives, such as the ones that are here. 
and of course following the formula that I presented to you earlier today. And I also want you to evaluate your house or apartment using nouns. So uh, once again, using the formula that I'm presenting to you today. And then of course, you're going to follow this formula. So I want you to make as many examples as you possibly can. The idea is to practice as much as possible. Okay, pretty good. We can think of things like Now we have some expressions such as big enough. So you, as you can see over here, we have the adjective over here, big enough, too small. And we are, have also expressions to compare, right? Houses are as convenient as apartments. Houses are just as convenient as apartments, okay? So, well, we're gonna we're gonna try to solve an exercise. I think solving exercises is um, better because we can somehow uh, practice the information that's being presented in the in the video, right? So that's why we have evaluations with adjectives over here. And you know, after this part, we're gonna work in pairs or in trios, and then we're gonna create something with the information that's being presented. Okay, so you know the directions, work on the following questions, choose the correct answer for the question number one only. You may want to listen to the audio program played on the section 3.1, so you can answer it. According to the audio on section 3.1, Apartments are too small for pets, are too big for pets, or are big enough for pets? Are too small for pets. Are too small for pets. Yes. Which is correct. Apartments isn't comfortable enough for families. Apartments are too comfortable for families, or apartments aren't comfortable enough for families. Aren't are uncomfortable enough for family number three. Uh, number three, are not comfortable yeah, enough? Number three. number three. Okay, are not comfortable enough, which is the correct. Apartments don't have privacy enough. Apartments don't have enough privacy or apartments have privacy enough. Second option. Apartments Second option. don't have enough privacy. Enough privacy. Enough right. privacy. Which is the correct? Apartments don't have a space enough. Apartments don't have enough space. Apartments have a space enough. Apartments don't have, don't have enough, enough space. Enough. Okay, this sounds like an F, oh. people. It sounds like an F, F, F. It's like when you say laugh. You know laugh? You know laugh? Enough. Love, love. yeah, no. laugh no. enough, no. yeah, no. laugh enough. <laughs> hey, no. yeah, laugh enough. I have created a quote just right now. <laughs> no. No. Laugh enough, no. laugh enough, no. laugh enough. Okay, so let me see. Adjectives with nouns. Well, well, we're gonna be working in purse, okay. We're gonna work in pairs and you know, I know that you have, that you already saw this video because this is part of the homework, right? The second video was part of the homework. So tomorrow we are gonna see it a little bit quickly, but right now I want you to create something with the information that you have been given. Ahora vamos a crear algo, okay? Voy a, voy a formar um, grupos de tres. Creo que una va a quedar en pareja. Y ustedes, con lo que se les ha venido enseñando, van a crear una conversación. ¿Okay? ¿De qué? Bueno, ustedes deciden de qué. Y para optimizar tiempo, pueden navegar el internet y tomar una conversación y nada más irle modificando uh, a la conversación. Ya luego, este, yo les voy a pedir que nos demuestren de alguna manera cómo ustedes han incluido los temas que hemos venido estudiando últimamente. Okay, so we're going to create the group. So we have 18 people.
Let me see. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. Hey, uh, let me see. On Thursday, we're gonna we're gonna go over the the midterm. Okay. Let's see. Let us create the the groups. Here we go. Good luck. Good luck. Is there any problem, any question? Do me the favor to join the group. Mm. Uh, what group? No me uh, aparece any. Group number two. Mm, and also Olga, I don't know, Olga? Hello, Olga?
Uh -huh, vaya, por ejemplo, ahí vamos a decir, excuse me, could you tell me where the Liceo Cristiano is? Y ya de ahí otro puede decir, ¿verdad? Esa parte. Sí, excuse me, could you tell me qué? Eh, where Liceo Cristiano is. Ajá. Where you tell me, ah, uh, ¿qué? Liceo Cristiano. Liceo Cristiano. Ok. Y de ahí entonces, la respuesta, ¿cómo sería más o menos? Ah, there is, por ejemplo, si está cruzándose la calle, por decirlo así. There is across, o oh, across, o oh, por ejemplo, enfrente de en algo. ¿Across? ¿Qué es across? como de, 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 de cruce. Mm. Ah. Es la experta, no, compañera. Que, pero me dice, there is a cross uh, from the... Por ejemplo, podemos ponerle... Uh, from the park, podemos decirle que está enfrente del parque, vaya. <risa> sí, cabal. Como que fuera... Frente al bueno. parque. Uh -huh. Y ahí podríamos hacer la pregunta, podríamos yes. hacer esa misma persona que le dice dónde está. Uh, bueno, por ejemplo, ahí la, la otra persona le agradece, ¿vale? le dice muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. Entonces o, sería, dice, en in front, there's a cross from the park. Y si le ponemos sugerencia, eh, from the park, eh, y le, 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 le dice, de hecho, yo... yo solía estudiar ahí. Bueno, ah, no, como él solo le está contando nomás dónde está la dirección, el otro es el que le está diciendo. O, o como que él sabe por qué él estudiaba ahí. Ajá, o sea, para meter la frase, ¿verdad? Digo, yo no sé. Ah, frente ah, sí, al parque, sí, sí. de hecho, yo solía estudiar ahí. No sé, digo. No sé si queda ah, bien. Sí, 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 me parece, me parece que él mismo se lamentamos. Cabal, cabal, cabal. Ajá. Y baja. A YouTube es study. Ajá, estar y, uh, ¿cómo sería? Aquí, no. ¿Cómo dice ahí? There. ¿Ah? There. Ahí. A used to study there. No lo puedes deletrear. Yo solía estudiar ahí. T-H-E-R-E. Ah, uh -huh. there. Uh -huh. Ok. Vaya, vale, entonces yo di que le diga lo otro. Este... Mm, quiero ver, me está metiendo otra cuestión de la que hemos visto. ¿Y el otro tema cuál sería? Yo no me recuerdo. Va, por ejemplo, aquí. Que era el de... Three blocks to Ajá. Uh -huh. Yes, this that way you go three. Mm. You were three blocks to Washington Street. Centro right is on the corner across from the bank. Lo podemos cambiar por to Los Angeles Street. I don't know. Ajá. Uh -huh. Los Angeles Street. Y mm -hmm. podremos decir a la parte de, a la parte oh. de, de alguna oh. parte. Ajá, ajá, ajá. Yes. Next to the bakery. Mm -hmm. Next to the bakery. By entonces, the first, excuse me, could you tell me where, where the restaurant is? Yes, it's Darwin. You go. You go three blocks to Los Angeles Street, then to right is, is is on the corner next to the bakery. Ajá, vaya, pero aquí hay que lo podemos dividir. 
en la respuesta segunda para que podamos responder los tres. Ay, Dios mío, no, ya vamos a ya vamos a terminar y nunca. Vamos a ver. ¿Qué podemos poner de pregunta o algo así? Para que utilicemos el YouTube. Mm. Mm. Ahorita no. Vamos a ver. Usualmente, eh, que si es muy... Okay. Y es una ciudad, este, es una ciudad muy, ¿cómo se dice? Bueno, agregamos unas partecitas en la primera, excuse me. Ah, sí, vale. Es, excuse, excuse me, can you tell me where the supermarket, uh, supermarket is? Yeah, es una ciudad, es una ciudad turística, así podríamos preguntar. Va que sí, para ya, ¿verdad que sí? Para que así podamos contestar en pasado, en, en... ¿Cómo podríamos hacer la pregunta? Permítanme. ¿Unos cuantos pasan por aquí? Por aquí. ¿Cómo sería? Eh... Tal vez por aquí no tendría que ser por sí. la ciudad o por o por mi vecindario, no sé. Lo dejamos por la ciudad entonces. Por Siri, ajá, por ajá, the por city. City. Taxi sería for the city. Taxi live for the city. Sí. Vaya, you need to check the transportation country is right now. Tú necesitas chequear el transporte. Podríamos cambiar ahí. Al, este, poner ahí? Tú necesitas chequear. Mm. O ponerle una hora en específico de aquí a cada uno, cada 30, cada 15. Ajá, va, va, lo primero sí sería, tú necesitas chequear, ¿verdad? Sí. Yeah. You, need, you need to check. Check the. Check? Check, check of the. Chequear qué? Como ahí, ahí dice que necesita chequear el transporte, ¿verdad? Entonces, pero como nosotros no pero... le hemos puesto el bus, sino que Ajá. el taxi. I went to the no, I didn't. I went to the hospital with my mother because she is sick. With my mother? Mother? Eh. Luego que, que because, no le capté lo. Because she is sick. Because she, because is, she, because is, she is sick. La última palabra no lo que es ella está enferma. Enferma. Sí, sí. Travel and out. También podría ser. Y tú, y, vaya, usted me está respondiendo, ahí usted me podría hacer una pregunta. Okay. Puede preguntar, y, y tú, y, en pasado, y tú ya has viajado.
Just at the Lourdes. Espérenme un segundo, te lo voy escribiendo. Vale. And you, and you. Um, have you ever traveled? Have you ever traveled? Has viajado? Or, oh, and you. Uh, mm, aquí le mando en el chat. Uh, have you ever traveled? And ¿Y have you ever traveled? Ah, y hasta el pasado. Ajá, uh -huh. ¿y tú has viajado alguna mm -hmm. vez? Entonces yo voy a responder. Este, yo he viajado. A... Quiero ver. Yo he viajado, un ejemplo, a Guatemala, pongámosle así. Guatemala. Y he visitado este muchos lugares hermosos lo voy a poner uh -huh. entonces aquí está el pasado I had traveled to Guatemala I had vis visited many beautiful places aquí está lo voy a mandar uh -huh. Uh -huh. vaya ahí ya usamos pasado Ahora, ¿qué más hemos visto? De hecho... Ya, y eso. Va, entonces, en teoría, vamos así. Excuse me, could you tell me where the Liceo Cristiano is? Uh, y de ahí la beba decir, there's a cross from the park. I used to study there. Y después vamos a decir, do you know how often the buses come? Y el otro va a decir, I don't know, but my brother know it. Y ya de ahí va a hablar la otra persona. Y ya de ahí va a decir, let me think. O como podría ser, como déjame pensarlo. Let me think. Y ya de ahí puede dar una respuesta. Pero no sé. O sea, estoy diciendo, pero te diga. Let me think. Disculpame, um, me perdí. Every five minutes. Baja, ja. Pero el que diga es, es la C tiene que decir, let me think. Y tiene que ver a pensarlo. ¿va? Y ahí uh -huh. algo decir, every qué? Hijo, le falta un minuto. Every five minutes. Sí, diga, no sé. Ah, bueno. Lilian, es la experta. Lilian, ¿verdad? Liliana. Crisia es la que... ¿O quién es el que está hablando? Crisia es. ¿Y de dónde? Ah, perdón. Vaya, okay, ¿quién Christia? va a ser el hermano entonces? Él tiene que decir, let me think, every five minutes. Ay, no, ya me perdí. <risa> Ay, no. Solo nomás diga, let me think, como déjame pensarlo. Let me think. Después Vaya, de qué? Este, la primera persona va a preguntar eh, dónde está el liceo. Ajá. Luego la segunda va a decir que está frente al parque. Ajá. ¿Quién va a decir? Ah, 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 no, no, no. Luego la primera persona. Ok, pretty good. How was, Carlos, how was se, me perdió, se me perdió mi compañero, perdón. <risa> how was no the sé qué no sé qué toqué y volví aquí, Carlos. Okay. No ha vuelto, no ¿verdad? Ya todos regresamos, compañera, tranquila. No worry, no worry, Lourdes. Ay, Carlos, sorry. Juan Carlos is there, Juan Carlos is there. No, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hey, you can chat with Carlo now. Meanwhile, we start with the activity. How was the activity, people? Good? Significant? Did you learn? Did you practice? That's the purpose, right? So whenever we get into couples or in groups and I ask you to produce something, it's because I'm asking you to, I'm challenging 
uh, I mean, I'm giving you a challenge so that you can you can become stronger. Okay, so we're gonna start with the participants. I have, for example, Crisia, Liliana, and Aristides. Go ahead. Okay, um, excuse me, could you tell me where the Liceo Cristiano is? There is a cross front in the park. I used to, I guess it. I, I used to start in there, sorry. Uh, do you know how often the buses come? I don't know, but my brother know it. Know it. Aristide, let, let me did about it. Hasta ahí nos quedamos. No, every five minutes. No <laughs> sé. <laughs> Um, okay, thank you for your help. Finish. <laughs> wow, hey, you know, great, you know, the idea of fantastic, <laughs> and you included just two indirect questions, and, and you provided like the, the setting of the conversation, which is something really nice. Thank you. Now, if you want to keep working on that conversation, and then you want to provide a, a longer conversation, you can do it and present it tomorrow. Now, second participants, Cesar, Claudia, and Elena. Congrats, uh, people. Congrats, Aristides, Crisia, and Liliana. Excuse me, could you tell me where the, where the McDonald's restaurant is? Yes, it's that way. You go to blocks to Los Angeles Street. Then to right, it's on the corner next to the bakery. Thanks. I've only been in town few days, so I really don't know my way around yet. Oh, I know how you feel. We have not been enough days here. We still don't know where everything is. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Wow, people, hey, congrats. So a very well-structured conversation. And, you know, I was just paying attention to your pronunciation and everything. And uh, congratulations. Actually, you spent like 15 minutes to create something, something that belongs to you, which is something that really matters to me. Thank you. Group number three, Gabriela, Idalia, and Olga. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. Excuse me, Gabriela. Could you tell me how can I get to the closest supermarket to here? Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes, sure. There's how? like yes, bit supermarket in the neighborhood. How can I get there? Olga? Um, oh, responde. Oh, well, good trade on the tour, the first on the left. Um, um, is the supermarket, is the supermarket, uh, at the end of the street? Yes, yes. And, oh. Yes. I'm a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pretty good. Thanks for doing your best effort. Thank you. 
So that's Gabriela y Dale. Ajá. Yo tengo una pregunta y una respuesta. Tell me, Olga. Y, ajá. Eh, Se las digo ahorita. Yes. Excuse me. How can you get to the pharmacy? You can own it later you think in next to the gas station. The gas station. Excellent. Thank you, Olga. Thank you for participating. Okay, so we're going to listen to Dalila, Juan, and Maria Magdalena. Uh, only Magdalena and Dalila, teacher. Ah, the okay. classmate is working. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dalila and Magdalena. Here we go. Yes. Excuse me, could, uh, could you tell me where the supermarket is? There are us there across from the bank. Okay, thanks. Do you know what time is open? It should be open now. It's open at 7 a.m. Good. And can you tell me how often the taxes leave for the city? Do you need to visit the Shade the Pond taxi? Okay, thanks. Only that, teacher. Pretty good. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Dalila. Thank for doing your best effort. And we're going to listen to, because we still have like seven minutes, we are going to listen to Ileana, Margarita, and Wendy. Okay, teacher. What did you do this morning, Margarita? Okay. I was, I was warning outside the office. Did, uh, did you go to study university? No, I didn't. I went to the hospital with my mother because she is sick. Uh, do you go often at the hospital? Yes, I do. I go every Monday. Could you tell me what hospital is? It's Rosales Hospital. It is in front of Cuscatlan Park. Okay. That's it. Hasta allí. Thank you, Margarita. Thank you, Ileana. Okay. And, well, Wendy, I don't see Wendy. Yeah. Maybe she's working. Ah, yeah, Wendy's there. Thank you, Wendy, also. Thank you for doing your best effort. And we're gonna listen to Carlos David and Lourdes Nunez. Okay. Uh, Lourdes. Hello. Hello. Uh, una conversación. Uh, hi, Lourdes. Hello, Carlos. Um, es que la tiene Carlos perdón teacher un momento la tiene Carlos don't worry uh, Lord. Uh, where were you born ah ok uh, I'm from El Salvador I'm from uh, where are you uh -huh, ok uh, the next question is uh, when were you born where, when, where, uh, where, uh -huh. okay. where were you born? Ah, I was born in San Salvador, and you? Uh, I was born in San Salvador. Uh, what do you do? Sorry, uh, what are you doing right now? I'm studying this, but before I chose to travel a lot. And you have ever traveled? Uh, I have traveled to Guatemala and have visited many beautiful places. And uh, that is that's all, teacher. Thank you. All right. 
All right, thank you. Hey, how well, we, listen, I will check list attendance and then we're gonna talk a little bit about, about the, the, the activity because I consider that what's very significant. Uh, let me see, list attendance people in a very quick way, Alejandra Maria, Aristides, Presente. Okay, Carlos David. Present. Cesar Ivan. Present teacher. Claudia Margarita. Present teacher. Concepción de Lourdes. I'm here. Dalila Cristina. Present teacher. Elena Marisol. I'm here teacher. Gabriela Noemi. Present teacher. Idalia Margarita. Present. Ileana Janet. Present teacher. Ingrid Morena. Juan Carlos López. Le puse a present en el chat, teacher. Thank you. You are very kind. But not Ingrid, right? Juan Carlos. Sí, yeah, Juan, Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos is working now. Yeah. Crisia Morena. Present. Present. Liliana Dolores. Present. María Magdalena. Present teacher. Olga Lisset. Present teacher. Rina Margarita. Present teacher. Wendy Beatriz. Present. Good. Now, well, we have a couple of minutes just to close the session. Tenemos todo un par de minutos para lograr cerrar la sesión. ¿Cómo, cómo estuvo la actividad? Creo que no hay otra mejor manera de aprender que, ok, Juan Carlos, I got it, que poner en práctica lo que se ha venido estudiando, ¿verdad? Si nosotros no nos lanzamos a, a nadar, pues la verdad que si no se practica, no, no se logran objetivos como claros a corto, mediano y largo plazo, ¿verdad? Yo creo que ustedes están acá con el único propósito de lograr convertirse en personas bilingües, ¿verdad? Que, que este, puedan hablar de, de diferentes temas, pro, eh, dar su opinión acerca de algo, hablar eh, con alguien de los Estados Unidos de América. Eh, se siente muy bonito, la verdad. Eh, en mi caso muy personal, me ha tocado ayudarle a personas norteamericanas porque... Hay veces que ellos se encuentran en los centros comerciales y si alguien no habla inglés, no sé si a ustedes les ha pasado que les ha tocado ayudarle a alguien, se siente muy bonito y se siente al mismo tiempo gratificante porque uno dice, wow, lo que he estado estudiando sí funciona. Bueno, entonces, yo por eso les, les recomiendo que aparte de la hora que, que invertimos acá, mmm, ustedes hagan sus tiempos en, durante la jornada y practiquen un poquito, ¿ok? Ustedes sabrán sus fortalezas y sus debilidades. Ustedes saben, todos sabemos, ¿verdad? ¿En qué soy mejor? Quizás a lo mejor hablo, soy muy bueno cuando hablo en inglés, o soy muy bueno cuando escucho inglés, o soy muy bueno cuando escribo inglés, o soy muy bueno cuando leo inglés, pero al, algunas veces como que uno tiene ciertas debilidades, digamos, a lo mejor soy bueno para hablar, pero me cuesta mucho escribir. Entonces... Les hago el llamado a que identifiquen sus fortalezas y sus debilidades y trabajen sobre todo sus, con sus debilidades, ¿verdad? Porque las fortalezas hay que seguirlas fortaleciendo, claro, pero debemos también de darle seguimiento a aquello que nos cuesta un poquito. La plataforma siempre está habilitada. Ustedes pueden hacer un repaso, pueden buscar más información en el Internet a modo de ir completando aquellas dudas que ustedes, eh, o que surjan mmm, cuando ustedes están en el proceso del aprendizaje. Dicho esto, yo creo que es bueno que nos vayamos a descansar, que cerremos la sesión. Si hay alguien que tiene una consulta, una duda, o algo que quiera compartir con el grupo, perfecto. La verdad que lo felicito porque este... Es, los estuve escuchando con atención y veo que le pusieron esmero a pronunciar bien. Me recordé de cuando vimos las clases de la pronunciación de los verbos en pasado. 
porque por ahí noté que si algunos estuvieron muy pendientes de eso, de utilizaron el vocabulario y las expresiones que hemos visto y lo adecuaron perfectamente a lo que a, 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 la, a las situaciones que hemos estado también estudiando. Así que si no hay consultas, si no hay preguntas, si no hay opiniones, pues cerramos, vamos a descansar y el día de mañana, hey, recuérdense que yo les he solicitado día a diario una frase célebre o una frase que a usted le interese, ok. Todos los días yo voy a estar preguntando que nos enseñen o que nos digan qué es lo que aprendieron durante la jornada. No se van a gastar ni qué, ni 10 minutos en aprenderse un par de frases en inglés. Así que manos a la obra y nos vemos mañana. God bless you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye.